Hello guys, so a couple of days ago I released this video challenge for you to fix three errors in route model binding with this repository ready for you and you surprised me with 92 pull requests, it's a huge amount, I didn't expect that and in this video I will explain the results, discuss your pull requests and I thought it would be like two minutes of just discussing the correct results but there's a lot of stuff to discuss to show you about the pull requests themselves various details about your answers extra points to those of you who went extra mile and delivered something more than just the code solution so step by step about everything so let's start with the correct answers although in development there is no such thing as one correct answer there are multiple ways to do the same thing but at least how i viewed the correct answer so task number one was that view button doesn't work because it shows that class doesn't exist so when you click view the transaction class does not exist because in the controller so if we go to transaction controller, this show transaction doesn't exist. And even PHP storm underlines that for me, which means that if I, for example, click back and put in transaction, PHP storm offers me to import that transactional model here on the top. And then in the index, we don't need to load that anymore with full path. And then that view should work as expected. If we refresh that page, it works. So this was task number one, just importing the model. Task number two was about export button and it didn't work either and you should have seen something like this when you click that. So attempt to read property name on null and you can see that debugger shows that it's transaction username. So let's go to transactions export blade and we see that transaction user doesn't exist. But in fact it's all transaction that is empty. And why is that? In transaction controller the export is with route model binding with transaction but if we take a look at the routes web it's transactions transactions export and i've made it typo intentionally here a lot of you noticed that it should be transaction so it should be singular thing the same transaction name the same variable name as this one so it's a single transaction or for example we may leave that as transactions here but then transactions should be here and then transactions here. Let's actually do it the other way around. So all of you did it correctly, but I wanted to show you the other way. So what is the actual logic here? So if we put transactions everywhere, here in the export blade, in the transactions variable name and in the routes web, then we refresh the page and we get the correct page without any error. So it's not about singular or plural necessarily. It's about the same variable name here and here. And task number three was about different parameter UUID and assigning that to the transactions route model binding here. So by default route model binding happens with ID field and we didn't specify that in the routes web. So the correct answer or there are actually two correct answers possible and a lot of you mentioned that in your pull requests. So the first correct answer is to specify the field of transaction UUID and another way is in transaction controller, in transaction model, in fact, specify public function get route key name, which should return UUID. But then that route model binding rule would be active for any transaction. So it would then touch this method, that method show and anything else. But if you want to bound specific field only for the specific method, then you specify that in the routes web. So there are two ways to do that. So let's delete that get route key name. And one thing I want to show you here is why it sometimes works with 404 page and why it sometimes shows something. So let's roll it back so it would show error again, but it will be different errors. So in the list, if I click duplicate here, I get 404 not found. But for example, if I get to the ID 5, I get some data, but it's different data. It's ID 38, although I asked for ID with 5. Why it is so? Take a look at the URL. The first beginning of the URL parameter is number 38F. So the way it works, weirdly, it tries to convert that as a number. And the first numbers become 38. In this case of the first ID, the ID starts with a letter. So it's not number. There's no numeric to be parsed. And that's why it shows not found at all. So interesting behavior. So if you use your UID and try to parse with ID, sometimes it may falsely work. 
And now it's time to talk about your pull requests and you added a lot of value not only by fixing the task but also your valuable comments and other additions. And first I want to apologize for my own mistake which was pointed in the YouTube and in some of your pull requests on Windows for some of you Composer didn't work because I accidentally left one package which is Laravel Horizon in the Composer JSON which is not needed for this project. This project was created kind of stripping down another demo project and I unintentionally left the Laravel Horizon which wasn't needed. So for some of you the Composer install didn't work because Horizon has some requirements and for Windows users this is the way to fix it probably like hot fix it and it was pull requested later by Faikal Borsali and I then merged that and it became a part of the original readme file. So I apologize for that and will be more careful next time. Now your pull requests. And oh boy, did you surprise me. 92 pull requests at the moment and maybe there will be more. I was trying to review them one by one and comment on my phone on my way. But as soon as I hit like 20 pull requests and I saw that it doesn't stop, I realized that I started something much more active than I expected. I was expecting something like 10 or 20 of you in total and not 92. So then later I even added on my YouTube a pinned comment and even in the readme file I kind of officially stopped accepting pull requests and it's not even possible to get my review anymore. So I just stopped reviewing and I apologize to those of you who kind of was expecting my personal review. I just don't have that much time in the day. But I do appreciate that you participate and that you were very quick, much quicker than I expected. Speaking about the speed, that competition was not about the speed, but the first one, let's congratulate the person who was the first. So this is the pull request by Rudolf Bruder, which came 32 minutes after the video was published. Again, that wasn't competition about the speed. And in general, you shouldn't kind of wait for my challenges and be online immediately. It's not about any prizes or any awards. But generally, it's nice that someone managed to not only watch the video, but also made it so quickly in 32 minutes. And also one notice, I didn't really merge any pull requests because if I had merged them, then the original task would be kind of screwed because it would contain the correct answer or maybe even incorrect answers. So for all the pull requests, I just added the comment like well done or good job or something like that. Or if I had something to fix, I also added it as a comment. Maybe you have any suggestions. How would I be able to approve the pull request without really merging it? Should I kind of leave a smiley here, smiley comment or something like that? Or maybe I'm missing something and GitHub has some kind of a approve request like a review maybe. So maybe you should assign me as a reviewer and then I accept the code but don't really merge it into the main branch. Let me know in the comments what are the options. Maybe you have some ideas. And now it's time to give the extra points or extra thank yous, karma points to those of you who went some extra mile and did some extra steps. Extra points to those of you who added some readme or added some text explaining the solution. So Kingmaker added three points and explained what was changed and why. And even better was by the same already mentioned Faikal Borsali. He added the readme, he implemented the readme change so file changed. In every task, he added the solution of details and summary. And it's not really visual here, but if on GitHub you click view file, then it parses the readme and then task one, let's scroll down, there is the solution and then it's not visible yet. But if you click here, the solution is explained here. So I didn't even know, to be honest, that it is possible on GitHub to do something like this. And this is the syntax again. So you can watch the pull request number 65. Again, I didn't merge it into the main branch because it contains the correct answer. But it is a great way for the future for me to think how to provide the correct answer inside of the same project. Also extra points to those of you who added automated tests, although again, it wasn't part of the original test description. But here's the example of Archilex files changed and we find 
the example test here, the home page defaults to 302, which is redirect correctly. And then the transaction test, the feature test of DBC, the initial data, and then test individual transaction view should show. So get the route of transaction, assert that is 200. So assert there is no error. And also in another test, assert C of username and duplicate transaction also returns 200 and also returns the correct information. So check for the ID and UUID, which I mentioned previously in this video, that the page may return 200 instead of 404, but show incorrect data. So one example of the tests, and then another example with tests is by, not sure how to pronounce it, Ipont or Ipont. So files changed again, and we have some changes to the PHP unit XML, and then there's example test even deleted because it's not really relevant, and then transactions test made in a bit different way. So you can review the pull request of 57 ID, and this one is 20. So 20 and 57 are with tests with a bit different syntax and with a bit different expected assertions, so extra points to those of you who added the tests. And finally, a special thank you to the guy who kind of blew me away with his solution, not only completed the challenge with the fixes, but also shot the video of how he did it. And this is Justin, which I've reviewed his code on this channel a couple of months ago, and he is active on my Twitter, and we discuss random Laravel stuff there, and he shot the video on his channel response to Laravel daily route model binding challenge. So 15 minutes of actually doing step by step, installing the project, fixing the bugs. So you may follow the Justin's channel even, or just follow him step by step, how he thinks about things, how he fixes it and stuff like that. So thank you Justin for that extra effort, extra 15 minutes answering with the video to my video challenge. I guess that's it now. So what next? I will probably continue doing challenges because I see it's in demand. And of course this challenge was really easy with just like a few lines of code to fix. So I will come up with more complex and interesting challenges, but it will come probably a bit later because not sure if you've seen on Twitter, I have some family changes and I need some downtime for myself and the challenge would be a lot of time to prepare. And also I have a few ideas how to improve the challenges system for the next challenges and I need to prepare some code for that. So stay with me in a couple of weeks time, there will be another challenge. And again, there will not be a competition for speed. So you don't have to be the first to answer, but probably the first ones who submit their pull requests will be successfully reviewed by me personally. So like first 20 or so. So to get new challenges, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified of new videos. I publish them every morning at 5 a.m. UTC time or 8 a.m. my local Lithuanian time and see you guys in other videos.